You're listening to Mortgage Lending Mastery. Get the knowledge you need to advance your mortgage practice quickly and efficiently from Jen Duplessis, America's Mortgage Mastery Mentor with over 37 years of experience and over $1 billion in lifetime funding. Jen has been mentoring loan officers and realtors for over 15 years and speaking on stages across the globe. So settle in and get ready as Jen and her guests share their experience passion and strategies to help you crack the top producer code to reach new heights in your business. And now here's your host, Jen Duplessis, mortgage mastery mentor and head chick in charge of Kinetic Spark Consulting. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Mortgage Lending Mastery. I'm your host, Jen Duplessis. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here with us and allow for us to share whatever is going on in our lives, our mission, our purpose, our mess sometimes for some people, right? For some people, it's our mess. But I uh, appreciate you taking the time. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we really love having people see us as well as hear us. So that said, I want to take this opportunity to introduce you to our guest today, Ben Reinberg. And I had the opportunity to meet Ben at an event called Prosperity Camp, which is part of Secret Knock. And we also so I said, saw each other at Secret Knock just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he started building his commercial real estate empire at the age of 24 and um, old with nothing but, I'm sorry, a shoe leather and a lot of hustle, which I think he still has hustle today. Having talked to him, he has a hustle. But today he owns over $500 million in assets across the country and he shares his wealth building, commercial real estate investing and self-improvement and leadership insights and knowledge with his audience around the world. He too has a podcast. But guess what, Ben? There's nothing in here that says the name of your podcast, so I couldn't remember the name, but I know it has something to do with, it really doesn't have to do with commercial lending at all, actually. No, I'm not, yeah, I'm not in commercial lending, but um, I'll explain what I do, but it's it's Ben Reinberg, I own it. And uh, wherever you're seeing that, we'll have to make an adjustment. If you go to uh, benreinberg.com on my personal website, you'll be able to see the podcast and all my social media platforms. Perfect. Great. Great. So everybody can do that. So we welcome you to the show. We have wanted to do this for a couple of months and um, I appreciate it. So I want to talk a, a little bit about your commercial piece of this and then not as much though. I want to move into the self-improvement and leadership insights um, because that is something, you know, I thought leadership was a word last year and I, I felt like it was, you know, the year before it was vulnerability or authentic, right? Last year it was definitely leadership, um, but I feel like it's sort of morphed into 2023 and we'll see what comes out of 2023, uh, 23, maybe resilience will be the word, but um uh, you know, leadership, I think is really important. Of course, that's what I do as well. So, but let's talk about the commercial development. You know, when you start off at 24 years old and now you have over $500 million of assets, um, you know, there, there's something to be said about that, about the fact that people dabble in real estate. Um, and, and, you know, for you listening, I know you're either a realtor, you're a loan officer, you're an investor, maybe you're an entrepreneur, but, um, why is it that so many people have such a hard barrier to entry in any kind of real estate? It's a great question, Jen. Actually, um, I, I, that might be a typo. I started this when I was 23 and uh, and there wasn't internet out there like it is today. It was more going to the library, doing research, talking to people. And so it was a lot of boots on the ground. It was a lot of canvassing, looking at properties. What I do for a living is I'm a principal. I'm not a broker. Uh, I own and manage my company, Alliance Consolidated. We're based in Chicago. We have offices around the country. What I do on a daily basis is that we invest in commercial real estate and we also manage our own portfolio. So I am an office, industrial, and retail expert. Just to kind of give a preview before I get started to answer your question, which is a great yeah. question. So I've built millions of square feet of office and industrial being from Chicago around the United States. We've owned hundreds and hundreds of commercial real estate properties, office, industrial, retail. The last 18 years out of my 29-year career, Jen, I started to buy medical properties. And that was something that we pivoted because 
we were looking for more cash flow, more certainty. We saw opportunities with some of the laws that were in play when the Democrats were in house. Uh, it just made a lot of sense at that time. And we kept growing from there. And then four years ago, we got in the veterinary and property space, which is fantastic. The, the key is when I started, it was all mindset. I didn't, I, I was too dumb to know any different that I didn't have the limited beliefs that I couldn't get a loan or I couldn't raise equity. I just went out there and did it. I did my first deal. It was an industrial deal in the Chicago area. It was one of the best suburbs in the United States. You're 20 minutes from O'Hare Airport, very affluent. And there was captains of industry coming into a development called the Glen. And so we bought a 95,000 square foot industrial property. It was the first one I did. It was a two tenant building. Uh, in the first week, I lost 45% of the income. And that was what tested me. I was 23 years old and God put a test in front of me and said, okay, Ben, how are you going to deal with this? Something went on. You had a tenant move out in the middle of the night. I made that two property into a three property uh, uh, tenancy. And then I sold it for a three X multiple. And it was just an incredible opportunity. It, it launched me. It gave me confidence. We started building an office and industrial. We built retail as well. And then ever since we've been running and we have a lot of great staff and I have a leadership team that has 200 plus years of experience at my company. And I'm grateful. And I think a lot of my success is understanding the word gratitude and appreciation. You know, I was very fortunate. Uh, my mother instilled in me how to treat women. She instilled in me how to become a great leader and a great businessman. And she's really the foundation of, uh, of my success. She gave me a poem when I was in my 20s to show me what belief is about. And it was funny, Jen, because I actually pulled up the poem online. She cut it out of the Chicago Tribune where I'm from, the Chicago area. And she gave it to me and she said, and it was a tiny square and said, she said, put in your wallet. And I still carry a wallet these days, by the way. And I was 23 years old and my mom gave this to me and it was, you know, from the Chicago Tribune. It was a poem by the C.W. Longne Longnecker. And it was about the man who thinks he can and uh, if you ever get a chance to read that poem, it's very inspirational. And I go back, I would pull out that poem every single day. My mother used to say, pull out that poem when you're doubting yourself or you're lacking confidence to know that you can do it. And when you're younger, belief is such an important topic and concept. I really didn't understand. I had it, but I didn't really, I wasn't aware I had it. And when I reflect back now, I knew I had it. And I've ever been flowed in life as you go through different experiences and different criticism and right. people beating you down and telling you, you can't do it. You got to rise to the occasion. And uh, I tell my kids that too. I tell them that you can do anything and I don't put barriers on them. I open their lens and I encourage your audience to matter whatever you are side of real estate, residential, commercial, you're in the finance business like Jen was for years. If you put your mind to it, and you're persistent, and you're focused, and you're committed, you, I can assure you 120%, you'll be able to achieve your goals. A lot of where I see people struggle, Jen, in life, and in my company, and even our outside resources, and in my business, I do a lot of mentoring to kids, which I really enjoy, is I see a lack of commitment. Mm -hmm. And people think, well, I'm committed. I show up every day. I, I do this. I do that. Are you? If I, if I, uh, one of my mentors, and this is about a year ago, it was really cool. He, I was in his backyard and he had a cold plunge and he said, all right, Ben, uh, take off your shirt. And I want, and by the way, it was 40 degrees out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was in Chicago and that was warm because we get humidity. And he said, put your arms up to your top of your biceps in the water. And I want to see how long you can hold your arms in that water. And I held my arms for a minute and a half and it was all by challenging my mind and balancing my mind and telling myself, I'm going to do this because I'm going to show him I'll go as long as possible. And he said to me, he goes, I've never seen someone do a minute and a half. And that has to do with mental toughness and just realigning your mind to be committed to something. And I feel that a lot of people, it's one thing to be focused, but are you really committed? Are you really going the extra mile? I'll give you an example. I am sitting in my office on a Saturday. And I'm very privileged and grateful I get to be on your show and talk to you. Yeah. I'm also going to do work while I'm here. That's commitment because 
I have a responsibility to the people that work at Alliance to be the best version of myself. I have a responsibility to stay on top of things. I'm being pulled in thousands of directions with my personal brand and the podcast and the company is growing. We just added seven new people the past couple of weeks. So it's just something I do. It's I When I was younger, I, I learned the word commitment. I adhere to it today. If I ever ebb and flow out of it, I readjust myself and say, come on, Ben, we got to we got to go. We've got to do this. And it's always one thing I've learned, Jen, which I think is really important for your audience is when you're doubting yourself or you're wondering, like, do I really want to do this? Do I want to go work out? Do I want to, you know, do I want to eat healthy? Should I be eating this donut? Should I be drinking a cup of coffee? Whatever it is you do and you're doubting yourself, ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it really worth? Can you discipline yourself and say, you know what? I'm not going to have that extra scoop of ice cream. I'm not going to leave the office at four o'clock. I'm going to stay another hour and get work done. And it's that extra degree you do with yourself that will impact your commitment. And there's a great book. I think it's the uh, one degree factor that they talk about this. And that's kind of how I've established my career. It's like, okay, if it's six o'clock or six 30, I'm in my office. I'll say, what, I'll say, Ben, what can you do? One more thing or two more things. To, can you make an extra call? Can you send an extra email? Can you take 10 minutes out and meditate? Whatever you can do to improve yourself and improve your situation, what are you willing to do to stretch yourself and how bad you want it? And it's funny because I've had tremendous success in my career. I'm very blessed. Um, I started from nothing and I didn't come from, I came from very modest means as a kid from Chicago. But I realized that if I wanted to change my life, I had to commit and I'd be focused and persistent in order to achieve what I've achieved today. But what's interesting, and I could tell people very wholeheartedly, is I don't forget the day I started. I don't forget that kid that was 23 years old, that was scared, and that was lonely, and didn't understand business as well. And I went to a great university to learn business. I still didn't know what I need to know to be where I am today. So I had to develop. And with all these things in mind, I realized that you know, with people out there, if you're doubting yourself, it's okay. But just hang with it. Be persistent. I see a lot of people that start businesses or entrepreneurs or they could be loan officers or you're part of your audience. And when things are tough, they give up. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they look at life and they say, you know what? I can't. I'm not meant to do this. Well, you know what? You are meant to do it. And you have every ability to do it. We all can. We're all different. Just because the next guy or the next woman can do it, you can do it too. And I think a lot of people feel beaten down when they have, when they fail and realizing that failure is closer to your outcome. There's nothing wrong with failure. I look at it. I am a business. We raise equity from high net worth individuals and family offices all over the world. And I can tell you, Jen, I've heard more no's, okay, and a lot of yeses. But I realized when I was a kid, I used to say, you know what? I'm going to get 30 no's today. And because I know I'm, I'm going to get 20. So if I have to raise 10 million bucks for a syndication or I have to raise 100 million for a fund, it's all in your mind of, you know what? That's okay. Someone said no to me. Maybe I learned from it. Maybe the next person's going to say yes. So I look at things um, and I would challenge myself and say, you know what? If I get 30 no's today, I might get 20 yeses. I might get 30 yeses. How many? Where am I going to go? And am I going to take that extra degree difference to enhance what I'm doing? And again, that it's our, my business in commercial real estate. It will test you in all different ways. You have ups and downs. Some some deals aren't as fruitful. You know, in the mortgage uh, banking and brokerage business, it's like not every house you're financing is going to get that loan or maybe the terms aren't right or maybe you get an 11th hour change. What I, what I see in people where they shine is when things are tough, how do you rise to the occasion? And so that's what I've learned in my career. And I've had a lot of lessons and I teach it and I back it up because I live it. And yeah. that's the difference between me and a lot of people is that when I talk and I, and I teach, I've been through those lessons hundreds of times and I could tell you how I felt. I could tell you how I learned from it. And what that does is it resonates, especially with a younger person who's kind of trying to find themselves and who am I and what am I doing? Am I good enough? And I, and I can step in and empower them to create a story for them to walk into. So that's, 
that's a little about me and what I do. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, appreciate all the insight that you had in there. You know, there was a couple things that I wanted to just, you know, rebuttal on, not rebuttal, but just respond to is, you know, the one degree, you know, obviously um, it's the secret. You can listen to that or watch that video. It's called 212 degrees. It's that one degree of, you know, at 211 degrees, water is hot at 212, it boils you know, certainly talking about that. Um, I spoke about this at, at Secret Knock as well, is that, you know, Les Brown says, if you do, if you do, it's easy, your life will be hard. But if you do, it's hard, your life will be easy. And what I think a lot of people think is that I'm working hard. So that's how it's going to be easy. And it's not, it's doing the hard work, which means taking that extra 10 minutes, taking, you know, like you said, uh, taking that extra time, whether it's in business or whether it's in personal life, you know, that extra half half mile walk or half mile run or, or whatever, you know, that case may be. And, you know, I think that's part, that's part of success too. And, and our, our friend Greg Reed wrote three feet from gold with Sharon Lecter and, and people quit on money. They quit all the time. And right now in the mortgage industry, um, and I would say even in real estate, you know, people aren't engaging, they're not out, they're not, uh, they're hibernating and they're not, because they're quitting. They're basically quitting right now on themselves and, you know, want that instant gratification. And part of that is that, you know, get so, so used to that instant gratification when the market's hot, that they're not prepared when the market isn't and they don't see results. So therefore they quit on what they're doing. So I want to ask you a question about, um, about going, I just want to go back real quickly. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but just back to when you were 23, 24 years old, because uh, one of the things I'm thinking about is that when I was 23, 24, first of all, I think I was pregnant. Um, I had been married for like three years. I think I was pregnant at that time for my first first child. And, uh, you know, and we already owned a couple of homes. We were already, you know, starting to build our real estate empire. But what what circumstances be real specific about this, but, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because I want to move something else is, um, you know, how is it that a 23 year old has the opportunity to buy this big, you know, or, or what, however size it was, I guess I'm assuming it's a fairly large size purchase of commercial. It could have been a little something, I don't know, but where, do, how do you have the wherewithal to even do that? Did you have a family, you had your mom, did you have another family member that was already in commercial that that you were able to, you know, look up to and and be able to do it? But why? Why and how? How specifically did you get that done? You know, being young and not having any cash. Well, um, speaking of Sharon Lecter, um, she I read her book mm -hmm. when I was 22, 20. And she was on my show recently and I thanked her because she inspired me with her book, which was her inspiration. And we had a pretty interesting moment together. It was very heartfelt. And when I read that book, which Rich book, Dad, Poor Dad, Poor Dad, I'm just making it was sure. Rich Dad. Yeah. 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 So, so she wrote the book and I read it multiple times and I watched an infomercial at night and I ordered it. And uh, snail mail mailed it to me. And then after that, I was inspired. Mm -hmm. And what I did, is I did not come from money. My parents were not in commercial real estate. No one I knew was in commercial real estate. I didn't really understand it that well. But after I read the book and I did research, I said, I want to buy assets that produce cash flow. But I want to buy, I want to be where the icons are. Well, being from Chicago, we have some of the biggest icons in commercial real estate in the world. Yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. So I would read about them and I would fantasize about being that person. And I said, one day I'm going to be Sam Zell. One day I'm going to be the Pritzkers. One day I'm going to be as wildly successful as the crown family. And the list goes on and on in Chicago. And I would drive down the city. And I would see all these tall buildings, like the ones you see behind me on my screen. And it would inspire me. And I said, one day I'm going to order, I'm going to own those type of skyscrapers. One day I'm going to order own those type of industrial buildings that are so prevalent in Chicago. And I dreamt it and I realized, okay, well, how do I get there? So my godfather was named Bruno and he worked at a local bank in a town I was from. And I went to him and I said, you know, uh, I found an asset 
in the suburbs, industrial building. I need a loan. I did not have a balance sheet. I probably had no reason to get the loan. Mm -hmm. I end up getting an 80 LTV loan, 25 year amortization. There was recourse. I don't sign recourse anymore at the, at the experience level and age I'm at. I'm too smart now, but it didn't matter at the time if it was recourse because I had nothing. They couldn't take anything. If worst case scenario had the downside came into play. Right. And so what ended up happening was, um, I went out and I syndicated. I raised a few million dollars in three weeks. It was all shoe leather. I threw on a blue suit and a red tie and I went out there and uh, it was a challenge. I when I when The people I bought it from were two icons in real estate. They were one of the largest home builders in the United States. They started a company called Cambridge Homes and yep. they sold it to Lennar. And these, guys, these guys are worth billions of dollars. And they're famous guys and they're, they're associates and colleagues of mine, which I'm proud to say. I remember I was so young. I sat in front of the conference room. I'm wearing a, you know, a hundred dollar suit. If I was lucky, they're wearing nice clothes. They put me, they specifically sat me. They both walk in to intimidate me. They were probably in their sixties at the time, very successful. And I was sweating and they said, all right, well, what kind of credit do you need for this property? I went through it and I laid it out. And I said, if I don't get the credit, I'm not closing. And they said, really? And they said, okay, hold on. They went back. They left the conference when they came back. They said, all right, well, we'll give you this. And then I closed. And so I syndicated it and uh, I had to beg someone for a loan, a bank. And once I did that, it just launched me because I realized like at such a young man in this business that I didn't really understand, I can do anything. And it inspired me to keep going. And uh -huh. and even when you have ups and downs, you keep going, you keep pushing forward. So that's that's how I structured my first deal. And uh, I was really young. I was very fortunate. But for everyone out there, I didn't come from money. No one gave me anything. Uh, mm -hmm. No one taught me the business. And it's one. It's the reason why, Jen, my next life is I am going to teach the business to someone from A to Z. I want them to create a legacy. I want them to build wealth because I took a step back a year ago and I wasn't fulfilled mm -hmm. and something was wrong inside of me. And I said, and, uh, and my family said, what's wrong? I'm like, I'm, just, you know, I got plenty of money. I've done a lot of deals. I've been written up in numerous publications, but I just have an empty place inside me. Typical. And I realized that, oh, by the way, <laughs> yeah. And I realized that I had a void in my life. And, and so then I said, I said, I like to serve and help people and create impact. And I said, well, how do I do that? And then we started the personal brand. We started the podcast and we're growing it significantly. And we haven't been doing it for even a year. I haven't been on social media. And I've been on LinkedIn because Jeff Weiner's from Chicago and uh, I've been on LinkedIn since he launched it. And it's a great platform, but all the other platforms that I wasn't on, and so now that I'm on them, it's a different world. And I've oh, had yeah. to come out and explain who I am and be vulnerable. But one thing I realized last year was the way to impact people is, is to create wealth for others, to help them learn how to build a legacy so they have choices and they can help other people. And I said, well, what if I could change one person's life? And I come from Chicago and the South side of Chicago is one of the most violent areas in the world. We have more homicides than anyone. There's just so much violence and so much just, it's just, it's sad and it breaks my heart. And I live in California now, so I don't have to really see the violence that goes on in my hometown, but it breaks my heart. And I said, what if I could take one kid out of that environment and change their life? Mm -hmm. How would that impact them? Would it impact their parents, their grandparents, their significant other? Do they have kids and, and create this legacy for them to be able to get out of that environment help other people and help other people in their environment become who they want to be. And I think that's why I was put on this earth yeah. is to take all the hard work and knowledge I've developed and create a life for other people. Yeah. I love it. Let's talk. Um, uh, thank you for sharing that as well. Um, so the last question I have for you, well, it's not the last question, but second to last question. <laughs> and I don't ever have prepared questions just so you know. I just have a lot of curiosity and stuff, but let's talk about syndication just for a second here. The, um, 
you know, syndication has become, maybe that's the new word, right? Everybody's doing syndication. Everyone's doing multifamily syndication. Now, you know, we're already, we have been investing for a while, but we're now, we are now investing in um, mobile home park syndication. We're investing in storage syndication. You know, this pooling of money. We need to get investing in medical property. I'm sorry, say again. We need to get you investing in medical properties and diversify yeah, a little bit more. Right. But, you know, it seems to be like the popular thing is everybody's doing syndications. But um, I mean, one, I want to know how you feel about everybody jumping into it and how it's changed it. The other is because I think it's diluted some of the I, I think it's diluted something I, in my perspective, it has. Um, and then where do you think it's going to go? Uh, do you think this is something that is going to be prevalent for years and years and years to come that now people are going to be the average Joe is going to be involved in the syndication and not so much the, you know, I've look, I've done VC pitches, you know, venture capital pitches most of my life, <laughs> right up in, up in New York for companies that I've worked for. So I know how it goes, but that was all behind the scenes. Now it's the everyday person who's getting involved in the syndication. So what do you think about it now? Where do you think it's going to go? Well, it's interesting because we've been syndicating for years. We still do a little bit, but we have funds we're raised, which is really one big syndication when you create a fund the way we do it. But uh, yeah, there is a lot of players in multifamily. It's one of the reasons why when I was in my 20s, I didn't want to get into it because some of the biggest icons in multifamily are from Chicago and they still continue to operate out of there. And you don't see them on social media, these people. It's interesting. However, uh, I think it's great if you can do a syndication and you want to do multifamily, great. Uh, it's definitely an uh, oversaturated market. There's a lot of people that do it. Not a lot of people do what I do, which I like because there's a high barrier to entry to learn every single medical type of tenant and how they function and how they deal with their commercial real estate. It's a different animal. There's licensing laws, et cetera, different areas of the country we invest in around the country. So uh, I think it's great if, if, uh, if there's people that want to syndicate, I will tell you what will happen because I've seen this in different cycles. And I, I actually like it in a way mm -hmm. is there's a cleansing. That goes yes. on. When there's a bad environment, a recession, a depression, you name it, what ends up happening is the real players get cleansed out of our business, commercial real estate, Same which multifamily is part of commercial real estate. Yeah. Exactly. And what happens is, again, people aren't persistent. They can't hang in there. They're not capitalized. They're, they don't beef up their expertise when they need to. So I see a lot of challenges with people because they don't have the ability to hold. And what I am excited about, I see us every market. People come in, and then they leave. And yep. Ben Reinberg is still standing. And yep. I will always be standing. And same with my staff. And it's because of the experience we have. It's because of the knowledge that we crave and try to learn every day to improve ourselves and constantly showing up to work and do what we have to do. And so uh, you will see a cleansing coming up in this environment, but it's also when there's chaos, Jen, there's opportunities. And so I'm really excited. I am, we are adding staff because we are looking forward to the chaos and the opportunities and we're going to take full advantage of it. So, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's great if people can syndicate, but I also think that you have to be very conscientious. You really have to leverage into talent when you're just starting off. So those people that are getting in, they're going to learn real quick that how did I, am I just going in alone or kind of leverage into things? I was fortunate while I was younger. I didn't have any mentors or coaches or someone I can lean on. I had to figure out myself. But if I'm out there in the ether and you're listening to this incredible podcast, I would tell you is find a mentor or coach or someone like myself or someone out there that can give you guidance. So you don't lose your ass. You can, you can have uh feel confident in what you're doing and leverage into someone that's been on the learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's really important. And I agree with you. I totally agree. That's why I said it's been diluted. It's, it's now heading in the direction. That I think um, some people unfortunately are going to lose some money, um, you know, but I think the opportunities are there, you know, and as an investor and, and, you know, I speak at a lot of investor events, you know, what I'm telling them is get ready, 
because the good times are coming as a good quality investor, but you've got to have the knowledge behind it, you know, to support you. So, all right, as we leave, as we leave our time here today, what is a mantra, an affirmation, a daily routine that you do that you'd like to share with everyone that might make an impact if they put it into play? So um, I'll give you my morning and evening routine. Uh, I wake up slowly and I do not look at my phone uh, for at least a half hour, an hour. I said, because when you start looking at your phone, all of a sudden you're answering and that's the first thing you're waking up is dealing with problems. Yeah. I don't even challenge it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a tough thing for people, but I, I encourage everyone, if you could stop looking at your phone for like a half hour, start with there and then maybe you could do an hour. And I know we're all busy and I get it. I'm extremely busy and I get it, but I do it. And so I wake up, I meditate, uh, for, um, anywhere from 18 minutes to 36 minutes. Uh, then I do a vinyasa to stretch. Then I go and see my trainer and I train hard. And uh, I'm 53 years old. I'm in the best shape of my life um, and best health of my life right now. And then I go to work and grind and do my thing at noon. Even before I came on the show, I meditate for nine minutes. Before I came on, I meditated. I want to make sure I showed up as the best version of myself for you, Jen. And that was important to me. And so, and then after work, um, go home. And uh, then before bedtime, what I do is I journal. And then I uh, do my vinyasa. And then I meditate. And the reason why I do all this is it creates a routine, but also creates me to be balanced with my emotions, to make sure that I show up at everything in life and also to improve my health. So that's how I do it. Um, I encourage everyone, if you don't work out, uh, get your body moving. Your body physiology and moving every day is so important. I like to do it in the morning. Some people do it at night. Uh, I'm very fortunate. Uh, I could train with a trainer to keep me disciplined and get me to the point I want to be health-wise. But stretching, working out, eating healthy, that's been my secret to success as an entrepreneur is, you know, when you can grind an incredible workout in the morning and then you relieve all that toxicity and negativity and fear, and you can just fill your heart with abundance and know like, Hey, I just kicked ass with a great workout. I'm going to go to work and kick ass again. And you celebrate those wins. You know, a lot of people don't celebrate wins and I didn't either for years. It's like, I get to be on Jen's show. That's a win. I could spend time with her. That's a win. I get to go have lunch with my family afterwards. That's a win. Uh, and so I started realizing and said, I need to celebrate all these little things in life that I took for granted for years. And that's another thing that I do to really heal my mind and love myself. And so um, there's so many things you can exactly. do. I mean, yeah, and create a morning that routine that works oh, yeah. for you. Absolutely. And I think that gets back to the gratitude that you were talking about. You know, I always look at it as bookends, you know, is that um, it allows for us to have bookends so that all the chaos that ensues in our daily lives, the troubles, the tribulations, you know, the wins that we have, the people that we meet, the technology issues <laughs> like we had behind the screen, behind in the green, green room here, you know, all of that um, can be bookended and life is normal again. And then you just start again tomorrow with the same attitude and look at it. If you don't do that, then it's just circling the drain every single day. And you just get closer and closer to circling the drain. And that's why those things are so important. And um, so I love that you're doing that. Well, thank you so much, so much for being with us today. I'm so excited to have the opportunity to speak with you at full length. Again, we had a little chat at Prosperity Camp that didn't get much time at Secret Knock, but... Thank you so much for sharing um, your wisdom with us. We really, really appreciate it. Um, and I, I wish you the best. I can't wait to see you again shortly. I'm sure I will. Yeah, for sure. And uh, thanks for having me on. And uh, feel free, if you want to learn about commercial real estate, go to my company website, alliancecgc.com. If you want to learn more about me, I'm always sharing content to help you in health, wealth, relationships to create success in your life, go to benreinberg.com. 
And uh, feel free to listen to my podcast. Jen was on my podcast. She's going to be launching soon. It was a great episode. It's Ben Reinberg. I own it. And uh, owning every aspect of your life, which is really important, which is what I had to develop to become the person I am today. So Jen DePlessis, thank you so much for having me on. What a pleasure. And uh, it was great seeing you. Thank you. You too. So again, everyone, uh, Ben's already given his information. I was going to ask you, but that's good. I'm glad you gave it. We'll have all the links in the show notes. So just scroll right down there and please take just a quick few minutes to give us a great five-star rating and write us something in there that you learned from Ben that you took action on or that really resonated with you. We like to hear what you're getting from our guests. So with that, we will catch you next time on Mortgage Lending Mastery. Thanks for listening to Mortgage Lending Mastery. Be sure to subscribe to hear more sales tips, ideas, strategies, and tactics to help you with your personal and professional growth to multiply your results in record time. And if you like what we're doing, don't forget to give us a rating and review so we can continue to bring you the best content possible. Wanting more beyond the podcast? Join our Mortgage Lending Mastery membership community where you will find extended interviews with our favorite guests weekly training, tips, and insider secrets, fireside chats with Jen, free content, meet, share, and collaborate with other members, and so much more. Click the link in the show notes to learn more about this exclusive content. Mortgage Lending Mastery is an industry syndicate charter podcast. Industry Syndicate is the first podcast network specifically for the mortgage and real estate industries. Get the Industry Syndicate app in the App Store or Google Play today.